Hi, my name's John Bailey and welcome to my YouTube channel, Bailey and Fishing. When I was a kid, I was lucky enough to fish with people like John Wilson and Ivan Marks and over the years, I've developed my own ideas to add to the ones they passed on to me. Now, one of my favourite ways of fishing is catching tench on the float and I've been doing this for years. I've got some really, really top tips to pass on to you. Wow, absolutely everybody wants to catch a tench on a float. When I was a kid reading Mr Crabtree, I understood the importance of watercraft. In those days though, all tench fishing was done on shallow estate lakes of just an acre or two, so location just wasn't a problem. Today though, tench fishing is nearly always about big, raw gravel pits that look really forbidding, and so watercraft on these is absolutely essential, believe me. There are occasionally shortcuts to success and what I'd really recommend is that you go around any water you've got in mind and particularly talk to the carp anglers. Stress that you're after tension, they won't see you as a competitor. Talk to them about what they might see at dawn and dusk when you're not there, tench rolling, tench feeding and so on. And very possibly they'll come up with the goods and tell you where you might make a good start. Here I am on a, a, a pit that I guess is about 12 acres, something like that. I haven't known it long, but it's been very, very successful for me. How did I start? That's the question. Well, we're talking about float fishing. So, from the off, you're really talking about from the very bank side to about 10 or 15 yards out into the lake. So that cuts down the acreage for a start. So it might look a big inaccessible water, but you are looking at the margins. All gravel pits have a, a drop-off that runs around their entire perimeter mostly. Now that will go down to anything between 6 and perhaps 12 feet in depth and tench love to patrol this drop-off. So that's an amazingly great starting point. There's one big and very obvious tip here and that's look at the weed. Now behind me I've got this piece of weed here and that is growing in about four or five feet of water and that's the sort of depth most weed grows at. Now between me and the weed, you can see there's no weed, which means deep water. And that's the channel I'm talking about that's just out from the bank. So use all these little tips, these little clues and get a really good image of the lake in front of you. Now I want to talk about wind. Tench are hugely sensitive to wind, so get an idea of the compass layout, if you like, of your pit, so know where north, south, east and west are. If it's a northerly blowing, then you want to be where the wind is at its least, so you're looking for the northerly bank. They won't feed in a northerly wind, so avoid the southern bank, because that's where the wind hammers into. It's the other way around, if it's a southerly, they're very happy to feed in a southerly wind so you can fish the northern bank where the southerly is pushing. So you've got to get an image of where your pit lies, where the sun rises, where the sun sets and that will stand you in huge good stead. The wind is critical. One top tip, on a, on a bright day like this you can walk around the lake margin, look into this deep marginal channel and you can see clear areas of the bed where the tench have come in, fed on invertebrates like caddis grubs. That's the place to target with your ground bait and your hook bait because that's the place the tench love to feed. A really good tip, that one. Absolutely everybody wants to catch a tench on the float and I'm exactly the same. Now, 
I suppose it's customary to think that float fishing for tench is a bit fuddy-duddy and a bit traditionalist, but it completely isn't. And I've talked about that first channel, and really one of the most effective ways to fish that first channel is with a float. It's not traditionalist, it's really up-to-date, and it's massively effective. I just, I just love fishing the float for tench. So let's have a look at the floats in detail and let's see what really works on these big gravel pits for tench. Right, now I've got a lot of favourite tench floats which I'll show you. This is, this is the first which I've already got on the line. It's a beautiful reed stick float. Now this is cunningly and crafted, craftily made by a great pal of mine, Andrew Field. It has caught hundreds and hundreds of tench. It, it's a perfect float for let's say 10 to 12 yards out when the water is deep let's say a 10 15 foot deep swim and there's a bit of a chop on the water it'll take a couple of AA, triple a's and it's a cracking float i want to fish further out and it's very windy and perhaps even deeper i might go for a float like this now this is another favorite of mine it's uh, made by a great pal of mine ian lewis this time another handcrafted float beast of a thing this it takes two ssg shot you can use it in a big wave in deep water at distance and it really really will punch out into a wind and it will register a bite very sensitively and of course with that little sight bob you can see it even in quite big waves it's a cracking float for big distances big swims big waves beautiful in an ideal world I would go as light as possible. And these two pole floats are absolutely perfect. I'll probably set them up with a sort of size four shot or even a size six shot. And they are ideal for indicating just the tiniest hint of a tench bite. They're easier to control than you'd think and you can even get away with them in just a bit of a ripple. So if you've got very shy biting tench, these might just do the trick for you. Let's say the wind is an issue, but you still want to fish very light, very, very fine, then these beautiful insert floats are absolute crackers. Again, these are made by a mate, Ian Lewis, and they're magical to use they really work now you shot them down just so the tip is showing this big body manages to cope with a decent chop on the water but it's so sensitive attention's only got to breathe on the bait and you get some reaction you get a visual you, you get a real visual take there so again two floats really to use when things are getting tough and when there's a bit of a breeze. So with these floats, really, I feel equipped to tackle almost any conditions in that beautiful, real tench zone, that marginal ledge. Okay, these are the floats that I use. The really big question now is how do I actually use them? I've obviously got the locking shot, just by the eye of the float if I'm using this reed waggler. Now this is a big deal for me and it's really, really important. I don't have any more shot on the line at all. The line goes completely shot free right down in this instance to a boilie on a hair and a size 12 hook. Now this boilie acts as the anchor as well as the bait. So because I'm fishing reasonably close in, that is all the weight that I need to hold the rig steady. Now why do I do this? It's because basically a tench will go down and feed, then it will come back up into midwater to chew that food. If it sees shot on the line, it's scared, it's spooked and it leaves the area. If it doesn't see any shot in midwater, it's a lot more confident. The other reason is that as the tench goes along, hoovering the food up, it can pick that boilie up and it feels absolutely no other shot whatsoever. 
I will probably fish generally two feet over depth. So in a 10 foot swim, I'll fish about 12 feet deep. So that all the line is slack. When that tench sucks up that boilie, there is no other weight apart from the boilie in its mouth. So you get the most confident of takes. It really, really works. So remember, all your shot up by the floaters locking shot, no shot on the line, fish two feet over depth, have plenty of line on the bottom with no shot down there at all and the tench will be fooled time after time. It's a great way of fishing. Boilies don't always work because we don't live in a perfect world. So one of the next favourite baits as far as I'm concerned are maggots. Tench adore maggots but there's a problem. If you use two or three real maggots on let's say a size 14 hook, the tench will very frequently not suck those in simply because the weight of the hook and the weight of the, li of the live maggots is too heavy for the power of the tench suck. So remember, a tench goes along the bottom sucking food in. Now, if your hook and your bait is too heavy, it won't rise into the tench's mouth. Simple as that. What do I do? Right. Scrap the live maggots and use plastic artificials. The great thing about these is that they are buoyant and they will neutralize the weight of the hook. So if you set up a rig like that, it should just hover half an inch, even less, off the bottom. It will waft, if you like. And as a tench swims along, the slightest suck and this whole hook bait, plus a hook, will rise into its mouth. The tench will be fooled completely by this, and it really works. Get over that barrier of thinking, a tench isn't going to suck in a bit of plastic, because they do. A big tip here, always test these either in a bucket or in the margin where you can see exactly how they work. What you don't want is for them to be waving two or three, inch three inches off the bottom. You've got to experiment till the whole rig just settles at that speed onto the bottom and just wafts in any current that is made by the pectoral fins of the tench as they move backwards and forwards. It's a fab rig. So, boilies don't always work. Maggots don't always work. Sometimes the tench are absolutely fixated on naturals. And there have been times in the past where I've been unable to get a bite on a float unless I've used caddis grubs. Yes, caddis grubs found on the bottom of these lakes on the hook. So, if they're not eating caddis, the chances are that in the natural world, the tench will be eating bloodworms. So this is another crafty step forward. This is a rig made up with little plastic bloodworms and they, like the plastic maggots, just hover just fractionally off the bottom. And again, the tench coming along sees this, which looks for all the world like a little bunch of natural bloodworms and in it goes. So, You've got your boilie rig, you've got your maggot rig, you've now got your bloodworm rig, and you can take this on and on and on. You might think you want to use sweet corn, so you can use a piece of plastic sweet corn to get that same effect. So it just wafts, I keep using that word wafts, it just moves backwards and forwards, fractionally off the bottom. When a bait is presented like that, it will go into the tench's mouth so easily. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that film and I hope you catch more tench as a result. Remember the big three, find the marginal channel, 
keep your shot off the line and make sure your bait is critically balanced. There'll be loads more films coming up, absolutely packed with fish catching tips. If you've enjoyed this film, subscribe to the channel below and do leave your comments please.